All right, today is the day. And if you have noticed that a lot of pictures that I have started to post show the car look like it's being put together, but sadly, those pieces are just sitting in place. They need to now start to get attached to the vehicle, at least enough to progress forward and start doing some things where we can uh, fit those pieces one to another. Anyway, today we're gonna look at the rear end and how we've built the little structure back there that's gonna be the latch mechanism or at least the base for the latch mechanism and a little bit of a structure for the rear wing and other things that are gonna occur in the back of the vehicle. Anyway, let's go take a look at that. Now on the rear subframe are these little towers in the back that uh, hold those bracing, but they also have a hole in the top that's gonna hold this whole structure that we're gonna put together today. And part of that structure is these, to add to that tower, are these uh, side plates made out of quarter inch aluminum. They've got a bend on it that's going to come up and mount this whole box structure that you can see above it that's just sitting in place right now. But it also has a little bit of an interference with the muffler and we're going to trim that out and also weld in a little bracket that's going to stiffen this quarter inch plate as well. So we get a little tab and joint here. We'll weld that up and cut that notch out. Fit those side braces. Now it's a matter of this box comes in uh, two pieces that I've had bent up and uh, water jet cut. We're going to take those and weld it all together. So slide all the tabs together and tack weld this thing. And then go ahead and weld all those uh, slots into the, or weld the tabs into the slots. Now I had a little bit of trouble in these welds and I'm wondering if anybody out there has experience in this in I'm thinking that maybe this water jet actually leaves some of the abrasive embedded into the aluminum because if I don't sand them out, they seem to have a little bit of a problem welding. If anybody knows anything about that, it'd be interesting to know in the comments. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and uh, tack weld or weld all these uh, tabs in here and get this box built. And of course, there's uh, three bends on the box and uh, slots on two sides. Tabs, so we're gonna put those together. The first ones went in together real nicely. Second one, we're gonna have to put a screwdriver and some clamps in there to pull it all together, get all the slots and tabs lined up. Tap them in place. Once we get this thing whole uh, jigged together, we'll go ahead and finish welding up all our slots and tabs down this thing. Now you're gonna see later on also that after we did some trial fitting, that there's a little bit of a curve in the rear clamshell that interferes with the ends of this box and I had to trim those corners out. And you'll see right now that there's complete box structure and then later on you're going to see little corner triangles missing. Actually turned out kind of nice. I have the whole, one of the holes lines up with some mounting holes on the bottom. Kind of hard, couldn't get my hand through there of course, so trying to get a tool to get the nut in there. Later on once the corners are gone, it was much easier to put the nuts in and it uh, looks nice as well. Final welding on this thing. We're gonna take it in now and uh, give it another trial fit. Of course, uh, working on a project like this, it is a lot of just fit, do some work, take it apart, fit it again, take it apart, fit it again, lots of that. Like here you see, I'm talking about trying to fit the nuts through these round holes. Worked okay when you have a tool, Later on, when those corners disappear, that you'll just see. I didn't show that in a video, but you'll see them disappear, and you'll know what I'm talking about here now. There you go. But now those uh, quarter-inch plates that are mounted to the subframe that come up, have a little flange on them, we're going to put some uh, blind rivet nuts in there so this thing can be bolted together. I'm marking those off now, line up with uh, that brace underneath get our bolt hole drilled through, take the thing apart, and then that'll give us access to our uh, quarter inch plate braces. And then we'll go back with our larger drill, the size we need for our blind rivet nuts. Now this uh, quarter inch aluminum plate, I guess is pretty thick. I could have just uh, threaded right through the aluminum, but uh, these rivet nuts seem to work really well, especially the aluminum that they expand and stay so tight in the aluminum that uh, they are pretty permanent. Very rare you ever get one to break loose and turn. 
although in quarter inch plate they do take a little bit of a work with these at blind rivet tools a thinner plate a few squeezes and they've expanded out in their position but in the thicker plate you can only do a little bit at a time it's amazing that you can get these kind of tools nowadays for uh, so inexpensive you can have a uh, a set of this for just under $30 if you want. Now we got our uh, blind rivet nuts in place. We're going to do again a trial fit. Put this thing on. Put our main bolts that go into the towers. And then grab a couple more uh, bolts to go into our blind rivets. Then again, our trial fit is complete. Now, once we got this on, it's going to be able to put the rear clamshell back on here and go to work on how we're going to fit the rear bumper. We're going to call it the rear bumper. It's a full molded piece that makes the rear of the car. Once we have the clamshell in place, I can put the rear bumper on just clamped into place for right now. But I have taken, you see that aluminum comes down and that's going to be another piece of aluminum is going to be bolted onto that. And that's going to make a little mount for our rear fans that are going to blow out those little vent holes. So I've created a line with laser down onto the top surface, but had to drill a hole. I'm going to run a plumb bob, plumb bob through there and mark the lower surface as well. And now I'll throw it onto the floor, put our laser on. And through that original drilled hole where the plumb bob went through, I can also shine the laser through the fiberglass so I can mark the surface. And then the laser goes through that little hole. I can mark the back side as well. Set up the laser on the opposite side and mark it level. And once I got it marked, take it out, take our little uh, saw and uh, zip these things off. Nice and level to go back onto the car. Again, I'll never stop stressing how much I love this uh, saw. These oscillating saws are wonderful. Once we got it trimmed, we'll go put it back in the car for another trial fit, and there it is. Okay, we have that rear clamshell sitting on there, although it is just temporarily just sitting there. It is a good place for it to be sitting out of the way and a good storage place for it while we're working on other things. But we need to make sure we have a place to uh, keep it permanently and that will be in that same position but hinged so we can lift it up and work underneath it. Um, that video is coming up. I am working on some hinges, have that designed, gonna 3D print those and cast those in aluminum. So those will be a little bit before we get that done, but we'll have a video for you on that. Anyway, that's the video for today. Thanks for coming by. Come back and see us again.